All right, party people. It's time to show you some of the cool stuff I found um, this morning. Uh, it's not like any like ancient artifacts from Egypt or anything that I'm going to retire off of, but they're just kind of cool. I never saw them before, and you never know what you're going to run into. So I'm going to flip the old camera around so I can show you what I'm looking at. Or look what I'm... whatever. <laughs> anyway, let me show you. So the first cool little item is, I know a lot of people like John Deere, but it's a John Deere like camo boonie hat thing. And it snaps right here. It was pretty sweet and it was only like a dollar. And then these things were awesome. Um, sometimes I, I, well, a lot of times I learn by watching other sellers and sometimes I'll look at something and I won't know what it is. And this kind of goes into yesterday, yesterday's video about knowing as many categories as you can. Well, anyway, I saw these skates, these ice skates. And I thought, well, I don't know. And I put them down. And this lady bought them all. And I thought, hmm, I wonder why she bought them all. Maybe she has a lot of kids. So I looked them up. And I'm an idiot. They actually sold for good money. And she bought them, a, <laughs> bought them for like $3, 3 or $4. So I saw these. And I bought these for 20 I know. 20 is a lot of money. Don't freak out. But I, I'm going to list them. I'm going to list them for 74 I don't know if they'll sell for that, but that's what I'm going to list them for. They're super cool. They're vintage um, men's figure skates, and they've never been never been worn. Oops, sorry. They just look super cool. And uh, there are some... Whoa, don't want to rip the box any more than it is. I'm going to sell it new and damaged box. I already have the photos put up. So then yesterday, well, this is yesterday, actually, yesterday and today. Yesterday was also, seems like, ice skating day. These I got for, whoa, hello, get you in frame. These were $6. They're women's figure skates. I thought those were pretty cool. When I showed you the John Deere course, I'm always picking up the VCRs. This time, one of my last VCR hauls, I didn't show you guys, but I bought like four and two of them didn't work, so they went into the recycle bin. I could have sold them for parts of repair, but yeah, I was kind of over it. So that one there, I at least tested it that it turns on, it doesn't spit the tape out. A lot of times with these VCRs, when they get old, and I don't know what it is exactly, I'm not a VCR dude, but you'll put it in, you'll push play, it won't play, and it'll spit it back out. That's no good. So this one I made sure it went in, it played, fast forward, uh, rewound. Now all I have to do is throw in a a head cleaner and it should be fine it comes with a remote I bought it for seven I'm gonna list it for 60 or so and ship it with the old pirate ship then there's these things these things I might not do good on they're called um I forget what they're like kangaroo shoes or something like that good news is when you have kids if you screw up you can always give them to your kids they are used but they look very lightly used I bought them for eight and they probably only sell for 40 so you know, not not terrific once you throw in shipping and stuff. And, eh, it could be sketchy. Um, let's see. This stuff I've gotten in the past, but I'll just show you anyway. If you guys don't know this brand, Kirby, it's a really, really, really good vacuum brand. That is like an attachment you I think you can put onto your existing Kirby thing to make it uh, a shampoo vacuum. That was not today or yesterday. That was last week. But uh, since we're here, we're all together. Might as well show you, right? That was pretty cool. That'll sell, of course, not shipped or not listed. And then an original Xbox. You can see the sticker. It's 15. I did not test it, but I made sure to double check that um, parts or repair comps are around 40 or so. So I at least won't lose money. Um, I have all the stuff inside to test it. Um, when you buy used video games, it's good to just buy a, I have a power cord, an AV cord, I have a controller, I have a game or two, just so you can test it. You know, that's probably a duh to most people, but, you know, new people, come on, there's new people out there trying to learn. And then anytime I see something like this, not this exact thing, but this look, it just looks old, it looks vintagey, antique -y, and so it cost me... Well, focus two dollars it won't focus but it's like a a vintage shaking this greater shredder thing from fans like some culinary ridiculousness 
for two bucks the comps are only 30 or so but you know whatever then there's these kodak trays they go to those old depending on how old you are your dad or your grandpa had those slide projectors they'd instead of taking pictures they put they get the slides and then you'd have to sit there and watch the hawaii vacation for two hours i never knew anyone that went on a hawaii vacation but i've seen it in tv but anyway those things are what hold the slides they were two dollars each comps are pretty good so today was one of those days when there wasn't except for the xbox that'll be a good flip if it's working and the vcr that'll be a good flip but the rest is just rinky dink stuff that that I've learned like none of the other resellers went after the carousel they're gonna be those aren't like a hot item they're not gonna cook overnight you know they'll sit but they'll sell and they'll sell and I'll make money off them um, as well as unless these skates are super duper collectible they're probably gonna now I've had roller skates that sold within a couple days but and these might also but probably won't but that's okay because let me just show you whoa I have a lot of room in here a whole lot of room and then I have another this is embarrassing because I know a lot of guys struggle with storage but I have another 1200 square foot garage in the back that we call the barn that all this overflow can go into so I'm very fortunate and blessed to have that I'll show you some other stuff I picked up I didn't even look this up because I've sold lots of if I can get the bag off sorry this is a professional show here we've got going um, here we go. I don't know, probably a dollar or two, but it's this thing. It says Oregon. That's a good brand for chainsaws and stuff like that. And it's basically something that you use to sharpen your chain. I'm, I, I think it's a guide. So like when you sharpen a chainsaw, you, you have to use the file, which is there on top. And then that's the vise. You would hold it all in and then you'd sharpen your chainsaw. Another cool thing is a, an actual boomerang. It is a vintage boomerang, Sportcraft. It was a dollar, and I'm going to sell it or list it for 20 I don't know what it'll sell for, but come on. It's a boomerang. Let's see. I forgot what was in here. Um, this is happening live, people. Oh, cool. One of these vintage shoes. They're from Holland. And they're painted, and actually I'm pretty sure, fairly certain, this is an ashtray. Just like, um, I don't know if I showed you those little shoes I got, but I have a, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll turn the light on. So there's that. Super cool. I don't know, there's a dollar, so cheap. I'll just clean up that stain, and it'll sell. This thing, uh, this is a thing... I got it for a dollar fifty cents. It's what Mormon missionaries, I'm pretty sure, will take on their missions, and it kind of helps them with talking to the new convert stuff. I listed one for fourteen ninety nine. It sold the next day, so I don't know. Maybe it's nostalgia, or maybe it's someone that's going on their mission and needs one. I don't know. Showed this in my other videos. This is Revere Wear. It's uh, eighteen oh one Revere Wear. There's a two quart pot. I don't know what I paid for it. But it's probably a dollar or two. I'm going to list that for probably 28 or so. See what happens. Um, then, of course, here's an example of, you guys know what retail arbitrage is. Something I picked up yesterday. These are super hard to find. Not, I mean, not this particular one, but Pokemon in general are hard to find. There's that. I got those for 15 each. Um, I'm probably going to list them for 50 or 60, something like that. And just a whole bunch of crap here when you're something that um in the show i was on um ebay addicts one of the things that they asked was preparing to go full-time uh as you can see i have a lot of things listed let me see a lot of things listed not as much as you know there's lots of people with thousands and thousands i've only i'm up to 1100 now a little over 1100 but i've also got all of that is unlisted, except those camo pants. But from about that net gear over, and then across, and then over, and then on that shelf back there to the left, that's all unlisted. Of course, that's my kid's bike, not selling that. I bought it, so I won't sell. Anyway, so that's all unlisted pretty much. And so there's a good amount of stuff that's unlisted. 
that I'll be able to weather a storm if I go through a drought or oh, last night, you know, if you watch my videos, you know, I do the martial arts. I do this martial art called Kikido, which is Korean and it incorporates Taekwondo. Actually, let me show, show you my face. You don't want to just look at that. Who, who wouldn't want to see my pretty face? So anyway, um, Kikido incorporates um, Taekwondo, Judo, and like uh, Hapkido, stuff like that, which is like joints and holds and stuff. Well, Taekwondo is a lot of kicking. So yesterday we did sparring, and that's when you basically practice fight, and you have all your gear and all this stuff on. But um, I'm very new, and if you guys have done martial arts stuff, then you know the new guys are always dangerous not because we're super cool and good at it but because we can't gauge our power you know like we were doing two uh one minute rounds and the whole it felt like the whole minute i was holding my breath so of course i was ready to completely die but luckily my sparring partner he's super awesome i've known him for a long time i knew him before be years ago when i started and then i quit and i came back anyway we don't need to get into the history of my kakito journey so anyway, this guy, he's he's the super best nice, super nice guy. Just really just a sweet, nice guy. And man, I was kicking him hard. Because <laughs> I was just, I, I don't know, I was trying to do good and I was kicking him too hard. And I kicked something, I thought it was his hip. and But my foot went, okay, that doesn't feel good. And then once the, the match was over, he's like, wow, you kicked my elbow. So I ended up kicking the, the tip of his elbow, which there was no padding. And on, on my feet, you wear like feet gloves, basically. And it's just a very thin pad. And holy cow, I thought I broke my foot. So anyway, that is a very long story. I didn't break my foot, luckily, I don't think, because I can step on it now just fine. But man, last night was, uh, it was very painful. But that's my example of if if I had broken my foot and God forbid I need surgery or I need to wear one of those boots. <laughs> I don't want to wear a boot, but if I have to wear a boot, then how am I going to source? You know, my whole Eye of the Tiger video yesterday about crushing the competition. Well, <laughs> I'm going to look really stupid when I'm hobbling in and they're all running past me, grabbing all the good stuff and I'm just hobbling by. So that's a good example of why you should have a little overflow, of course. We didn't know the COVIDs was coming, so that's another good idea to have an overflow in case you live in a, a state where they locked you down and didn't let you do anything. Um, plus, it's just like a, it's like an insurance policy. It's like, um, what do you call it? Like Dave Ramsey calls your emergency fund. Well, I have a, a, a money emergency fund, but I also have a sourcing emergency fund. Just be careful because new resellers can get into this thing where all they do is source. And I'm guilty of that too. All I do is source, 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 source. And I just had a whole basement full of crap, you know. I didn't know what I was doing, so I was buying junk. I was buying way too much of it. And then I said, let's do this Amazon liquidation. So I had, I think they're called Gaylords. They're basically these pallets with these giant boxes on them. So I had two, at one point, three Gaylords full to the top of Amazon stuff. And I'm thinking, I got to source some more. It's like, Dude, <laughs> no, you need to list dummy and sell stuff because you're going to go broke. So yeah, sourcing for me, obviously, is the fun part. It's the hunt. It's, like I said before, it kind of scratches my gambling itch. And I think it does for a lot of people. It's a it's a rush, you know, as, as much of a rush as a 40-year-old dude can get these days that's not in some super cool profession. You know, well, this is super cool, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so anyway... That's kind of the stuff I, I bought. Don't be afraid to to look into things you're not familiar with. A big thing for me has been, um, I live near, uh, not near, about an hour away, there's an Air Force base. So a lot of times I'll find mugs from, from the squadrons that are there, or hats, vintage hats. Oh, I wish I could show you one. Just from, you know, like older hats, you know, like the trucker style from, from old squadrons or old units and that's kind of cool you can always find military stuff that that is valuable obviously not like dangerous but you know stuff that's cool and vintage and that's really collectible and then i, I do good on these little tchotchkes like like that shoe i showed you or just like i don't know i mean i'm sure there's lots of people who have already thought of that but and i know like the debate is is there like you a lot of people say just learn one thing 
and do that and do that only. And that just gives me so much anxiety because I think, I do, I go back to the scarcity mindset and I think, well, gee whiz, what if I can't find that thing? What the heck am I going to list? So I'm not trying to say I know it all, but I I try to avoid being, um, what is it, a, a something at everything, a master at none. You know, I don't want to be a jack of all trades. I want to be very knowledgeable, but in at least a couple categories so that if I go to the, the thrift store, it's not always the same stuff there. You're not always going to find wool rich shirts. You're not always going to find corning wear, revere wear, or sports memorabilia. But if I know like maybe five or six, seven different things, then I know I'm always going to find at least a couple things to list because when you're trying to list, you know, you're trying to maintain a store, let's say that has a thousand listings and you might sell between Right now I sell between five or six, if it's really slow, up to 15 a day. So if you're doing that, you need to make sure you source and at least find a couple items to keep backfilling. Granted, I have the death pile here, but but still, you know what I'm saying. Like, You don't want any, any lag time to where you're completely out of stuff to source or to list, actually, and then you're just selling because eventually you're the algorithm the the ebay algorithm is going to slow you down and you're gonna it's going to bottleneck and you're not going to make any money then you won't be able to source gee whiz how do i know this oh because that's what happened to me you know except a little different i had sourced so much that i ran out of money and then i had to just focus on what i had listed um a lot of it was junk or was taking a loss so i wasn't really selling it and making a lot of profit and so I had to kind of start over and find some more stuff for my house and flip that and build up my, um, what do you call it, your um, capital again. And then I could go out and start sourcing either bigger items or multiple items to get everything rolling again. It Once you get your momentum going with eBay, you want to keep it going. You don't want to just stop sourcing and only list. And you don't want to only source and hardly ever list. You It has to be a balance and you have to have flow to your day. And this has been a lot of lecture. I didn't intend on it being this this much, but you know what? That's one of the things about you know being a full time reseller. It gets kind of lonely too. Like I went from a place with sixty employees, and I was a supervisor there, so I was I kind of had free roam. I could kind of do what I wanted. I could walk around, talk to people, socialize. You know, just in the in the process of managing the center or help manage the center. Um, and now I go to I have you guys, which is way more than sixty. I hope, but you know. Anyway, thanks for watching.